Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucia captures another global award proving to be the Caribbean's leading honeymoon destination. More than 120 people have gained valuable skills to secure employment in the tourism hospitality sector and the innovative board game that makes managing businesses easier. St. Lucia has won the award for the Caribbean's leading honeymoon destination at the 26th Annual World Travel Awards in Jamaica. The ceremony was held at the Sandals Montego Bay on January 28, 2019. St. Lucia has won this award 10 times with the most recent honor in 2018. St. Lucia was also bestowed the title of World's Leading Honeymoon Destination for 2018 a year that saw the island record a 5% increase in honeymoon arrivals over 2017. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, is positioning the island as a premier luxury destination, applying further concentration to the niches that continue to drive business internationally. Minister for Tourism Honorable Dominic Fede has lauded the efforts of the SLTA in helping secure the award for St. Lucia. The accolade comes as the island records unprecedented success in tourism. 1.2 million visitors came to the island's shores last year, representing a 10.2% increase. Growth in the cruise sector stood at 13.6%, with yachting pulling in an increase of 26.7%. Minister Fede, speaking in the House of Assembly Tuesday, emphasized the need for the government to take full advantage of emerging opportunities in the cruise or tourism sector. Mr. Speaker, looking to the future, we saw that there are 30 Genesis-class cruise vessels being built, demanding that ports like ours in Castries lift step up to the times to accommodate even larger vessels, Mr. Speaker. Last year, we saw the result of our government's decision to invest in the expansion of berth number one at Point Seraphine. Over 91 thousand more visitors than the previous year were recorded because of this injection. And Mr. Speaker, our government continues to advance plans to establish uh, in Port Viewfort, Mr. Speaker, very soon we will see the establishment of a world-class facility, Mr. Speaker, being able to accommodate the larger ships that are being built right now in the cruise industry. In keeping with the declaration of 2019 as the Year of Revenue and Inclusion, Minister Fede elaborated on the progress made in introducing village tourism. Mr. Speaker, the future demand that we invest in our cruise ports, that we invest in our destination. But Mr. Speaker, all of this would mean nothing unless we ensure that there's inclusiveness and we ensure we do what is right, Mr. Speaker, to enhance the economic participation of our visitors. Mr. Speaker, as we pursue this quest, Mr. Speaker, to develop tourism, I'm happy to report to this House that we are at a very advanced stage, Mr. Speaker, in establishing the entity called Village Tourism Incorporated. Mr. Speaker, thus far, the legislation is at a very advanced stage, and we will bring it to the stakeholders very soon for uh, consultation, Mr. Speaker, as we aim to empower our local citizen citizenry to participate at the highest level in the tourism sector. Minister Honorable Dominic Fede. Plans by Invest in Lucia for Development Project at Anz de Saab in Viewfort are advancing. Representatives of OBM International, the firm selected as the master developer, are on island to hold consultations with various stakeholders, including residents of Viewfort. Here's Anisia Antoine. Invest St. Lucia is in the process of conceptualizing a master plan for the Us de Saab area in Viewfort as part of the overall redevelopment plan for the southern town. OBMI Architecture was chosen from an international bidding process last year as the master developers for the Us de Saab project. 
OBMI has designed successful destinations across the Caribbean, Europe, and the Middle East, including Capella Resort St. Lucia. The Chief Executive Officer Douglas Cullig explained the method in which OBMI plans to progress the development. We're in, we're in that mode at the moment of gathering information so that we can fully understand what all the restrictions are and what all the hopes are, what all the dreams are, and, and what the investment criteria might be. So those are really the things that we hope to accomplish here in the next couple of days and, and start to get the beginnings of what we think is going to be a, a comprehensive plan for development over a period of time that it'll take to do that. You know, these things don't happen in a day or a night or, or a week. It takes a little bit of time for them to develop. So having a master plan that sort of addresses the fact that this has to happen somewhat organically, somewhat over time, is a really important part of the plan. Invest St. Lucia and the OBMI team are scheduled to consult with representatives from the community of Viewfort on the 30th of January 2019 on the proposed plans. During the first round of consultation last December, representatives of the OBMI met with the ISL and other key stakeholders, such as the St. Lucia National Trust and the Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA. Roderick Cherry, CEO of Invest St. Lucia, shared the feedback from those talks. I mean, one of the main concerns, and I think um, Doug may have addressed it, is that the beach, beach access has to remain as it is, as a community beach. Um, not just for the um, uh, uh, for Viewfort, but for you know for the whole South. You know, it's one of the more popular beaches in the island. So that was one of the concerns that came out very clearly from our initial um, uh, engagement with various stakeholders. Um, uh, the National Trust indicated that there there may be some um, uh, um, archaeological significance at some some areas there. So. They were. They informed us that whatever that is found there, um, I, during con, during the construction phase, whenever that is, um, I, that they, it, if there could be some kind of museum or some kind of way to you know to um, to preserve you know anything. There. So Cherry stated that the architectural design for the master plan for us the Saab may be available as early as the first half of 2019, at which time investors will be invited to participate in the implementation of the physical structures for the area. The master plan and development was launched on Tuesday the 29th of January 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. More than 120 young people have gained valuable skills to secure employment in the tourism hospitality sector. They are the first graduates of the Monroe College Administered and Government Backed Hospitality Training Institute. 127 students graduated from Monroe College's International Hospitality Training Institute. The institute that is a partnership between the college and the National Apprenticeship Program was launched in October of 2018. Its implementation is geared towards training unemployed youth and preparing residents for entry-level travel and tourism jobs. Students graduated with a variety of certificates from the five programs offered, including bartending, food and beverage, housekeeping, front desk administration, and event management. Senior Vice President of Monroe College, Dr. Alex Ephraim, provided the graduates with words of advice. You've got the skill that is necessary. Now you are going to start your journey. Wilson Mandela once said, education is far from nothing. Do that work and you can change the world. You got the skills necessary. The weapon that is needed to make an impact in your life, in your family's life, in the country's life. You got the skill necessary, and the professors who are who we have selected, they gave you all the skill necessary. But go and make an impression, and be proud of what you have done. The government of St. Lucia contributed a stipend of $500 per month to each student to help cover expenses of transportation and food over the course of the training period. Upon completion of the courses, students are then assigned to various businesses on island for internship and then assisted with finding permanent employment. Coordinator of the National Apprenticeship Program, Dr. Wendy Mosheri, lauded the students for taking the leap of faith. Your presence here is reflective of the value that you have placed on education 
on building human capacity, especially in the south of the island. Those of you who are graduating today, you have demonstrated that your dedication and your quest for acquiring skills in preparation for the workplace was greater than the temptation to remain idle and in a cycle of dependency. For the past years, we have always lamented the fact that young persons are involved in negative behavior, uh, unemployed, always disruptive. But you chose to use this training to get yourselves out of the negative cycle. Applications are now being accepted for the next class term, which begins May 21, 2019. The Training Institute is open to residents throughout the Caribbean region, with priority admission granted to St. Lucia residents. This is Nation Beat coming up, the innovative board game that makes managing businesses easier. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. The Small Business Development Center, SBDC, introduces a financial management board game to make managing your business easier. More in this report from Marvin St. Louis. When you are calculating revenue, Micro and small businesses are now being introduced to a simulation exercise in the form of a board game. The game baptized the Micro Business Game allows entrepreneurs to face real-life scenarios in the management of their finances in a dynamic and practical way. Royson Howell is the acting director of SBDC SEDU. So the game is set out in such a way that the persons managing this business have money, physical cash to handle, and they are introduced to the game by understanding the available money and how they would run that business, where the money is transferred to, how it is tracked, and ultimately they have to make decisions throughout that game. The, the essential part of the game is that it allows the development of entrepreneurial skills, especially around accounting and understanding your customers and risk management. These are the, like, the three principles of the game. SBDC, SEDU, hopes this exercise will encourage better financial record keeping with micro and small businesses. It was introduced to us through the German Savings Bank and it really allows persons to experience in a very tangible, a very practical and realistic way the money management component of their business. Normally we have clients come to us at SEDU and they have often difficulty understanding the relevance and the, the need to keep those records, financial records. We've experienced that throughout. Most people, when they go to a bank, they have difficulties getting a loan because they do not have the relevant documentation. They do not keep the relevant records. The Small Business Development Center is running monthly sessions of the micro business game and is encouraging persons to register. For further information and registration, please contact SBDC SEDU at the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs. I am Marvin St. Louis reporting. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.